So the way the thermostat in the collector works is I can't put the thermostat inside of the collector because the warm water flowing through there, when the sun goes away, it's going to be hot and that thermostat won't detect that it's gotten cloudy and it will just stay on even though it's gone cloudy because it will be, it'll be measuring the temperature of the water flowing through rather than the heat from the sun. So for that reason, the thermostat is up the top and a little channel and that little um, channel when it heats up in the sun it's like a little mini greenhouse when it when it heats up in the sun that detects the sunlight and it turns it on when it gets cloudy and the little mini greenhouse that it's in cools down and turns off so that's the thermostat control for the collector I can't put the thermostat in there it's got to be in there so these are the changeover valves for the Solar Collector 1 and Solar Collector 2. Um, there's a normally open and a normally closed valve on each of the two. So here's our booster valves on two. Um, one's a return, one's an out. And then same for the other collector. Um, there's a return, in and out, open and closed. So you can see Currently there's, this is energised, that's, that's holding the water back in that, in that collector um, and obviously the normally closed will be closed so that's telling me that the booster is currently, has currently got water flowing through it. So the booster is up there. So what we have is at the very end here, so at the very end here where the outgoing water is, I put the thermostat there so that the water goes in, it goes through all the pipes through that collector. As the cooler water works its way through those pipes, once it starts to flow past the thermostat at the end, the temperature change is detected when the temperature is low, is detected in here in the collector in the in the controls and it will switch off the water flow in there and switch back on the water flow in the original collector here and then that will allow that water to sit there in the sun and warm up um, once that collector and the water gets over a certain temperature um, and that thermostat is, becomes almost pointless the timer takes over and it just alternates between this collector and the booster so underneath it here is it is insulated using some insulation I found in a builder's skip um, and uh, around a bit of ducting um, and there's coils of pipe underneath that too um, so they're absorbing the heat from the tin underneath and on the top on the top as you see um, I've used a bit of insulation to stop the airflow in there and hold the heat inside the collector and there is a bit of pipe on every single corrugated channel 
down here all the way down to the end and then it goes underneath and comes underneath and um, it flows out down here down this pipe back to the collector and the thermostat is, is in here at the end of the coils um, so that's how that works and if we have a look underneath um, it's insulated underneath as I say so that's the um, new booster I'm going to be adding a another booster in front of this before winter so I'm currently getting a maximum temperature out of this system of 48.71 so here's the alternations if I zoom in this is in the water tank, storage tank so when it switches over you see the boosts and then, then it flattens out until it switches over and you get a boost and that's sort of how that works um, if I didn't have the change over it would just be down here somewhere it wouldn't be as hot so if we go out of tank and we look in the booster currently we'll let that load so today you can see it alternates it warms up on the booster the, cold, the water flows out, the booster cools down, warms up, cools down, warms up, cools down, etc, etc. And that same pattern um, can be seen on the solar water heater. Rise, drop, rise, drop. Heat cool, heat cool, heat cool. Out there, there's about 50 metre run of pipe. And that goes all the way back to the storage tank. So this is the storage tank. It's wrapped up in a ton of insulation and a thermal blanket. Um, and it loses about 0.26 degrees Celsius per hour when it's switched off so it holds the temperature in there quite well. It's currently about 45 degrees according to my wireless temperature probes. We have a look in there. You can see the water flowing in. In there. And there is somewhere in there. There it is. A temperature thermometer there showing it's about well, 45. Let's max that out. Um, there is a flow switch down here too so that if it um, if the water's not flowing if there's a blockage um, the motor will shut off so it's got power loss protection and a flow switch there for protection too so here's the greenhouse as it is at the moment it's a bit overgrown um, we've got some watermelons coming through I did have a big watermelon um, and I'll be completely altering this greenhouse by winter and that bed there will be the only bed that will be heated this year and it will also have a cover on it and I'll be adding some little extra controls for that so it can switch off on hot days etc and and um, redirect the water straight to this storage tank and I'll be adding an extra storage tank because the more hot water I can store um, quite likely the better um, and so yeah, and I'll be adding more planters in here because the more planters I have in here holding <coughs> daylight heat heating up um, the more heat that will be released in here at night time from those planters so the more mass in here that heats up in the day the longer it'll stay warm at night So here's a new upgraded uh, system um, What I've done is I've added a few so I'll run through this system here so this is the original controls here um, I'm going to be upgrading this again for winter. I'm going to be adding a third booster. It's currently only two now. These are the new controls. Um, and I'm going to be adding a third. Um, but some of the upgrades I've done in here, I'm also going to be adding a Wi-Fi control to it, so I can control it over the internet on my phone. I can switch it off and stuff. So, so what we've got here is we've got a, just got a contactor here. So when it loses power in here, if for some reason it loses power, this contactor 
will open up a circuit and back in the shed um, the pump will turn off so that's just protection in case we lose power in here because all the valves will close and you know I don't want it running so what we have here is we got our limit switches for the rotation and the reason I rotate this collector put the rotation into this collector originally is because I wanted it to sort of face directly at the sun um, because the sun moves around quite a bit and when it face when the sun is in the other direction this is not gonna it's not gonna the collector's not gonna create much absorb much heat is it so that's the point of that I'm going to be upgrading that before winter with a couple of little solar panels and I'm going to make it trace uh, sorry track the sun as it and rotate with the sun so currently this timer here is what controls the rotation of this so I've set it to seven hours after sunrise seven hours after sunrise um, my solar collector here will rotate around the other way so I'll demonstrate the rotation now so we'll just imagine it's just become night time this is set to auto currently so it's automatically controlled by a twilight switch but I can manually turn it on so when it's dark what's going to happen is it's going to cut power to these two timers and the collector is going to rotate around as you can see and what will happen normally in the winter is the compost timers will come on so I've currently got those so at night time and, and also on a cloudy day when there's no use in having the solar on this will switch over to the compost and cycle through six coils of pipe inside of my compost bins and as it cycles through those six coils of pipe it's pulling all the heat out of it um, and circulating that in the system and that's what's keeping the water warm um, and the greenhouse beds warm at night time and on cloudy days will be the compost heating so what I've done is I've added an extra switch up here so that currently I'm running the system only with solar because um, I don't I haven't got the compost pile set up it's summer no point um, so what I can do is I'll switch it over here to solar compost and I'll switch the valves on so this is what will happen in winter I've currently set it for 10 seconds cycling so you will hear these change over every 10 seconds there yep, change over change over so I've set them for 10 seconds so what that's doing is these are just gonna change cycle through six valves every 10 seconds um, and each valve is a different coil of pipe and the compost so I'll probably set that for about 20 minutes or so 10 minutes even in, in winter and that means each coil will get um, so if I set it to 10 minutes that gives each coil 60 minutes 50 minutes time to sit to stay 60 minutes for the water to sit in the pipes in the compost pile and warm up while all the other valves cycle through and over that 60 50 minutes the water will warm up and then when when its turn comes with the timer it will pump that back into the um, into the storage container and through the greenhouse beds heating them up so it was last year run with only four coils and I was able to get about it was able to maintain water about 32 degrees so I've got six coils this year so I, I should get a bit more than that um, we'll have to test that out in winter and see what I kind of heat I can maintain the water at and the greenhouse beds at so that's how that works so currently we're about to hit this limit switch here and when we hit this limit switch it will, the, so, this, the solar collector will be sitting in its position waiting for the sunrise in the morning so I'll just set this timer down here to on so that it works all the time so you can see so I'll rotate it around to on and in morning time as you hear there the, and because it's sunny it's um, the timer for the um, sorry the um, the uh, solar collector is currently active so the compost piles have turned off and it's using the sunlight heating up in the collector and this will, this is what it'll do it'll rotate back around and follow the sun after a time that I see here so that's basically how that works 
Um, so I'll just switch solar only again and I'll turn off those compass valves because we're not going to be using them. So that's the basic system here. So the way the booster is working is when the collector gets to this temperature I set on here, which is 30 degrees currently, I should set that a bit higher actually, um, the system will switch over automatically to the solar collectors. Um, the booster over here, when that gets to, I've currently set that to about 35 degrees, when the booster gets to 35 degrees, um, the valves will close for the solar collector here and open on the booster and it will drain all that water out of that booster. Um, and when the thermostat for this, which is in the end of the booster coils, intentionally at the end of the coils, because when the cooler water hits that thermostat, once all the water has been pumped out of the booster coils, this will detect the temperature drop and it will switch back over to the original collector here. Um, and then when, when this booster comes back up to temperature, it will switch back over to this one, drain it all out again, cool down its thermostat, switch back over so it'll alternate between two. And the idea between the alternations is it gives each the collector and the booster time to absorb that heat and change over rather than just having water constantly flowing through them and not absorbing all that heat. Uh, I, to get around a problem here what I've done is I've also got a timer here and this timer is just because if, if the booster gets above this temperature and stays above that temperature when the water heats up I want it to turn back to the original collector and I want it to keep alternating and it won't alternate if this stays above that temperature so to get around that I have a timer here currently set 20 minutes so that after 20 minutes it will just it will continually alternate every 20 minutes once they get above once the booster gets above its temperature that gets around the problem of it of this not changing back over the timer will make it change back to winter so I'll be adding a third booster before winter and that'll also have a timer and a, and a thermostat on that which I'll be adding in here too and as I say I'll be adding um, Wi-Fi control and I'll be adding another timer clock timer for some other stuff and I'll talk about that later on so that's how the basic system here works